Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to create a Flask app. Before starting this lecture, we need to configure the project dependencies. So first of all, we are going to create a virtual environment and in there we are going to install the Psycop G2 module. So we have Psycop G2 binary. Let's hit it install. So this is first going to create a virtual environment for us. And then within that virtual environment, it is going to install Psycop G2. The second dependency is going to be SQL Alchemy. And the third one is going to be the Flask itself. So it is going to take a little bit of time. Uh, I need you to be uh, to bear with me through this process. I'm, I'm going to copy this uh, the path to this virtual environment. And I'm going to put it right here. And we are going to grab that virtual environment okay let me just so it is this one right there we go so next stop i'm going to install the sql alchemy so pip env install sql alchemy so it did i misspell pip oh yeah i did misspell so i forgot an i there pip env install sql alchemy there we go. And after that, we are going to install Flask. Okay, so I'm just going to wait for it. Now, the app, the Flask application, what it does is it is going to allow us to create uh, URLs. And based on those URLs, the user will be able to visit our website. So next up, we have pip env install Flask. Let's hit it install. Uh, let's wait for it. Okay, so I was saying, based on the Flask app, uh, the users will be able to visit different pages for our application. So the app the route uh, at the route attribute of the app that is basically a decorator which is going to grab any s normal function and it is going to convert it into a view function. Let me clear that up. Let's uh, activate our virtual environment, pipen shell. So the virtual environment is activated and there we go. So now first things first, uh, I, will, I would like to go ahead and import from, from the Flask module, the Flask class. So I'm going to say import the Flask class and I'm also going to import the render template as well. So the render template is the function that is going to render any kind of uh, template that we pass in there. All right, so let's save that. Auto pip 8 is not installed. Let's just go ahead and install that as well. I'm going to grab the app and I'm going to say Flask. Uh, we are going to set it to the name for this file that we are currently working with. Okay, Flask could not be resolved to report missing. We just, it should not throw this error. Okay, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to move on from this, and then we are going to take a look at this later. So I'm going to grab this app, so I'm going to say app.route. I'm going to create the uh, root URL of our application, and we know we create that through a simple forward slash. And then whenever the user visit, visits this root URL, the following uh, view function is going to be called. So I'm going to call this display topics. And I only want this to render uh, to return return render template. Which template do I want it to render? It is going to be the home.html. So let's go ahead and let's create that. Now, because this is Flask, Flask actually expects a certain folder in which we need to provide our templates and that folder is called templates itself. So I'm just going to create that. Make sure you spell it correctly templates and within the templates folder I'm going to create the home uh, home.html file let's generate the boilerplate using shift and hitting one in here uh, I'm going to provide the name of the application so I'm going to say blogging uh, even though it is blog poster so basically the blog poster there we go and then in here, I'm just going to provide some basic markup. This markup is going to be static, but later on during this chapter, 
we are going to make it dynamic. Now I do see a message in our console that says uh, you're using pip version 21.0.1 however version 21.1.1 uh, two is available and we can use this command to install the latest version for us so I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna say pip install uh, dash dash upgrade pip uh, requirement collecting pip so it is going to basically update the Py Python package index for us and you can see how slow my internet is it's basically 5 kbps and it is going to take some time so within the HTML what I would like to enter is first I'm going to provide an h1 which is going to be the blog poster uh, basically just the blog poster then I'm going to say an h2 within the h2 we are going to have our topics then uh, all the topics will be contained within this ul so I'm going to say li each li is going to have an href uh, for now, I'm just going to provide the href slash topic slash one. So very, very hard coded. And I'm going to say topic one. Just uh, copy it two more times. We are going to set it to topic two. And this one is going to be two. This is topic three as well as this one. And after that, I'm going to create an H3. This is the form that the user is going to grab. Uh, the user is going to uh, fell in order to create new topics and in here I'm just going to say add a new topic this is going to be a form the action is going to be slash add slash we are going to take a look at these URLs later in this chapter don't worry about it and we're going to add a method post as well so the method is going to be post there we go so in here I'm going to create a div within the div we're going to have a label for our application uh, the label is going to be uh, the topic dash name and then we are going to have topic name later on I'm going to get rid of this label uh, this is just for now we are going to get rid of it later because uh, I want to provide a placeholder within our input so that is going to take care of the input field so in here I'm just going to say input with the type of text and the name for it is going to be topic title topic title we are going to use this name later and finally we are going to have an input with the type of submit when the user clicks on this button all the form info will be submitted to the server there we go so so far we are done in here let me come back in here and now we can see that that error is basically gone and finally I would like to basically execute this project so I'm going to say if name if the current module is equal to the main module of Python if it is equal to that then we want to grab the app and we want to run it and I want the debug method uh, the debug is going to be equal to true I wanted the debugging mode I want it to be turned on and now in here I'm gonna do something that we haven't do before and that is you can specifically provide what what you want your host to be and what you want your port to be so I'm gonna say host I want the host to be 127.0.0.1 and I want where is it there we go this is a string so make sure you surround it in quotes and we can also provide the port now usually for uh, flask we had port uh, 5000 I believe and for Django I thought I think we had uh, the port 8000 now in here you can specify the port whichever port it is so this application is currently running on port 3000 you can change it let's say I want it to run on port uh, 5533 Let's just save this and now let's go ahead and let's run this application so I'm going to grab the name of this application let's just copy that python.py hit enter and okay let's say pip env shell oops pip env shell and now let's 
run this application and there we go so you can see that our application is live on port 5533 and this port is the port that Django the sorry the flask server is going to listen on for incoming HTTP requests from the browser so whenever the user visits this page, it means that it is an HTTP GET request, which can be seen in the server log in the terminal. And when the user tries to fill this form and submit it, that is going to be an HTTP uh, POST request. Um, and then we are going to see a POST request here. So the port, the uh, process that is going to listen on this port is going to be the Flask development server. And when the Flask development server receives any kind of HTTP request, it is going to trace it to its URL. So within the, it is going to map it to the URL. And then whichever URL it belongs to, the corresponding view function will handle the respond to user. So this is how uh, we can basically create a very simple Flask app. We are going to build on top of this application as opposed to Django, where we, where we used to jump around a lot. Uh, Flask is going to be different. Uh, for Flask, I'm going to create these uh, series of consecutive lectures in which in, in each of these uh, uh, preceding lectures, we are going to complete our code, complement our code further. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.